Hello everyone, uh, you are welcome to uh, clip 2 in part 6 uh, where we continue uh, talking about the technologies and now we uh, just make a fast review about carrier sense multiple access protocol uh, actually most of the infrastructureless networks use some version of this carrier sense multiple access protocol uh, the MAC layer uh, is responsible for, for its operation uh, it has been adopted for the multi uh, the, for the multiple access of IEEE 802.11 Wi-Fi and also IEEE 802.15 uh, standards. Uh, it is very effective uh, for burst type data traffic such as in the internet, and uh, uh, one channel uh, in this uh, CSMA could uh, serve many terminals. So here the, the, the concept is based uh, on the uh, standard which has two types that is called point coordination function BCF and distributed coordination function. So the point coordination function uh, is a centralized MAC protocol able to support collision free and time bounded services and in the distributed coordination function it is a random access scheme it is called also statistical um, uh, multiplexing. So for the <clears throat> uh, distributed uh, uh, coordination function actually, it has a two-way handshaking technique co called a basic access mechanism. And uh, also we have the four-way four handshaking uh, techniques is based on uh, request to send and declare to send. So we, we can actually start uh, just a review for this standard. Um, actually, when, for example, if we have uh, two terminals, ter terminal A wants to communicate with another terminal, so the idea that uh, they will wait for some time, and uh, this time is called a distributed interframe space, so uh, they will wait for this short time and listening during that time and then they start sent over this packet A and uh, you can see that in the distributed coordination function there is no uh, clear to send command just they 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 uh, sense if there is no transmission during this uh, DIFS time they start to send the packet and then they receive the acknowledgement for other terminals once uh, they start because for example if this terminal assume that terminal B wants to send also so they start sensing the the channel for this uh, uh, time the IFS and if there is uh, uh, once uh, they start to listen they listen that there is a packet so the channel is already uh, like uh, occupied and then they will not send so they it, it is a busy medium so they will they will wait and once the 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 packet now is completely you can see that the packet a and then the acknowledgement after this short interframe space uh, between the packet a and the acknowledgement and after that if after that they also wait uh, for the ifs time again and then after some back of time they can start transmitting packet p if it is not busy okay and once they start to transmit packet p then for the, for terminal a this time will be a busy medium so this is the the distributed coordination function however that it has a problem here because uh, uh, if terminal b uh, communicate with terminal c okay so they are sending some packet and terminal a listening but you can see that this circle is the 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 area where where uh, uh, terminal a they can communicate and b is the area where b can the the, the signal with enough signal to ratio reach up to this point so the packet of b will not arrive to a so when a listening they they cannot listen b because of that they can start transmitting to see for example or to somewhere else and then there might happen this collision here now to overcome this problem in the carrier sense multiple access they they use another uh, like um, uh, 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 like uh, handshaking uh, protocol this is called the 
ready to send so before they transmitting their packet so they sent a ready to send packet to, uh, to, to, to to terminal B for example from A they sent to terminal B that ready to send so when terminal B listen to this message so uh, they will send back that clear to send okay so when they send back clear to send any terminal here close to B even they didn't hear the message of from A but at least they will hear the message of B and once they hear the message of B every terminal here will go to back off and they will not transmit anything until the message is delivered and because in, in inside this ready to send and clear to send they also we we also involve the packet size that it will be transmitted so they they can uh, uh, estimate uh, the, the the time duration when the channel be busy so you can see here that when they send ready to send so uh, the destination will wait for some time after the propagation time of course that which is like a uh, 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 short interframe frame space and then they send the clear to send and after this and again time this we, we keep this time short interframe frame space and then they start to send the transmitted packet and after some time the destination will send acknowledgement and after this acknowledgement that every terminal will wait this distributed interframe frame space before they start to transmit again so now this this is the 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 uh, the mechanism of course any uh, any source uh, or any terminal or any device listen to some uh, that uh, uh, th th that there is uh, the channel is busy they will not send and un until uh, unless the channel is is free and also if they when they transmit the collision happen then every terminal will go to the back of time and try after some random time before they try their, their luck again if the channel is free or not uh, uh, routing routing is uh, very important in in telecommunication in general especially that when we have like mesh type uh, network so um, uh, for example if, if if we have many terminals like like this one so we have a lot of terminals distributed in very very complex communication environment okay so that and and uh, this is a here and a wants to send back it to b but uh, they don't need uh, a to know where is b okay so uh, all what they need to know is uh, all what they, they they want their message to be to reach to b then they, there will be like address for b this is the address of B here and uh, of course we ha as we will see we have different routing protocols some routing protocol that for example when we have this this distribution this very complex type of uh, distributed devices so every device should know the address of the surrounded devices so for example this the, the, this device let's say let us call it for example C they will listen because every device will send like hello hello uh, message from time to time to update the uh, the uh, look up the table so we have table here that uh, for example c it has b and also it has let's say d and so on so they can listen to them and also uh, uh, this d for example they the this c can can uh, tell uh, uh, d or the others that what uh, devices that they can see so everyone knows that uh, uh, the addresses of all connected devices for example in this case if a send this message they want to send message to b and assume that we have another network here and it starts let's say with with for example with f and so on but here f uh, uh, the address of b is not bought in f so when a wants to transmit to be then they will check they will ask which terminal that has has address p or which network it has p so if doesn't have p but then this this uh, network or, or this device let us call it for example a k so this device no uh, tells a that that p is one of of connected network here so the message will be transferred to k k will check uh, uh, the, the device which also has has p so that it will be like like uh, routed in this way until it reached to b 
of course we have several uh, 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 routing uh, uh, protocols but route, uh, routing is very important for example in internet protocol uh, where uh, the structure or uh, the environment of the communication is really really uh, complex uh, so we need uh, like routing all the time uh, of course in, in uh, if we talk about about let's say cellular network in cellular network the, the, the things uh, is is different for example if mobile in in certain network wants to send uh, uh, or to communicate with another mobile and uh, other network uh, uh, the, uh, the there is here more systematic way to reach to the other other uh, um, terminal but here in especially in ib uh, in uh, in uh, ibtcb protocol that that we have more freedom we have more we have more flexibility uh, how to how to deliver the uh, the packet uh, until it reaches to the to the uh, destination and uh, they for example they add to each packet that there is some counting that for every route there is some increment for the for the number for certain number and and if it reach certain number of hops or, or of routing then they will disappear um, uh, uh, in that case you, you will need to request or to send the message again okay let us talk about this in more details in these slides so we have uh, as we said that in, in routing we might have it for or needed for the ad hoc networks or generally in IB uh, networks, uh, the packets usually are not delivered in one hub uh, from the transmitter to the receiver. Uh, routing is uh, is is uh, extremely important in very complex uh, network environment. Okay, and actually uh, sometimes we need also multi-hub uh, wireless communication in ad hoc networks, and uh, there is uh, some uh, like necessary reasons for that. We will see them uh, later. But uh, about the routing protocol that we have, for example, floating, where that each 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 node just uh, wherever that they receive a packet with certain destination address, and if if this packet uh, or if this device is not the destination, uh, it just it, it will retransmit it again. So it, all nodes acting as repeaters. Okay, so it will generate such kind of uh, protocol. It will generate a lot of unnecessary traffic, and uh, it is not use useful uh, for large networks. However, it can be sometimes solution in case of the network is rapidly changing, the, the, the topology of the network. And then we have proactive routing, in, and in the proactive routing that all router nodes maintaining routing tables containing all the nodes even if there is no traffic between the same source and the destination pair as i mentioned before so for example this is there is one device here where well, is one device here there's one device here and this device for example d1 and d2 and d3 so the communication can be done between only between d1 and d2 and uh, it can be also between d2 and d3 however in the uh, uh, in the routing table that d1 will also keep d3 here so we ha here we have d2 and d3 in the routing table because it can be reached over d2 however this uh, they need all the time to to update this this stage periodically especially that if those uh, devices are moving or in dynamic uh, dynamic uh, like uh, network uh, or dynamic environment and also even if they are static but but you know that now the connection between d1 up to d3 is done through d2 only d2 for example and what happened if the battery of d2 is down so if the battery battery is dead then this com communication will be uh, like uh, ended or, or disconnected and in this case d1 should remove d3 and d2 from it is uh, like routing uh, uh, table so this is called proactive routing so we need to maintain the tables from time to time that every table should be like updated with the current connected devices then we have also reactive 
uh, routing and the active routing actually the the routing of the table is needed to be updated once there is a there is the uh, there is a message or the packet needed to be created for example if there is a message from for uh, uh, starting from from device D1 and it will it will need to go to D D3 but actually right now we don't know where is D3 so the D1 start to uh, to like request that the message to be sent to D3 and this can can be done through floating principle so D1 will start to send and everyone they will ask like like request a packet to everywhere once it reached to D3 D3 it will respond to that message and the response coming and then in this case the 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 the, the routing uh, path is established in this case so this is called like reactive routing we have also hierarchy or hierarchical route routing and in that case we need to minimize this uh, locking and this exchanging of messages between between uh, the devices and this is important especially in case that you have very large uh, like network so we 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 divide we, we divide in this case the network into into like uh, uh, clusters and in each cluster they can communicate with, with each other so you can see that how the the, the, the routing protocols are designed actually we have uh, some ob optimization uh, objectives that we need to achieve for example minimizing latency or uh, minimizing uh, energy consumption or for example mini maximizing network lifetime and so on so assume this is the battery battery life so you can see that for example this device has a relatively large battery so then we can rely on this one for example to to to, to uh, to deliver the message more than this device where the battery is close to be dead okay and um, uh, assume that uh, for, for example we have device one device one we have here device two we have device three and we have here device four okay now uh, uh, I want to send message packets from device one up to device four assume that the power of device one is enough to to send it uh, in one hop to device to device four okay uh, or it can be transmitted over multi hops as you can see to device four which one we select actually depends on the criteria that what i want to achieve for example if i want to minimize latency of course uh, taking them in one hop is the fastest way however it will require the highest power or the highest energy why because you usually the transmitting power because if i want to achieve here a certain eb over n0 or signal to noise ratio certain signal to noise ratio then uh, that the received power should should be some value and you know that the received power in this case equal uh, is related to the transmitted power divided by the distance of the power of 4 so if, if this is the distance r then it will be of the power of 4 okay so uh, in, in that case if you want to achieve certain uh, 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 received power you will need to use high power high transmitting power because it is related to the distance of the power four um, uh, to make it uh, like clear uh, let us assume that the distance is uh, 10 meters okay so in that case the received power will be related to the transmitted power divided by 10 of the power four so it will be divided to 10,000 okay uh, uh, this this what the required uh, uh, transmitting power that should be like uh, uh, 10,000 times the received power or related to that okay but what if we have like uh, those those uh, uh, multi hops and for the, for every multi hop let us that we have here three meters three meters and three meters about about 10 meters together Oh, let us assume that the last one is four meters so you can see now there is the required power between the first terminal and the second terminal will be related to what to the transmitting power but divided over three of the power of the power four 
so it will be like three times three times three is times three so it will be nine times nine is 81 okay so you can see the the big difference in the required transmitting power so in in, in the first case the transmitting power should be related to 10,000 times the required received power and here the transmitting power is need to be only 81 times the required received power even if you uh, even if we need this like three times or even four times is still much less than the required power in the first case so by this multi-hop we can minimize the energy but of course we will lose something what we will lose we will lose the latency because first thing the the the, the middle devices are now um, used their time their resources used to to deliver another messages so they don't they cannot uh, use that during that time for their own purpose and the second thing sending this message to the first and uh, it will receive it and then uh, sometimes even not not directly repeating so sometimes they they decode the signal and then uh, they make um, for example it is like active uh, active repeater where it decode the signal uh, check the errors and correct the errors and then make the modulation and retransmit again and even if there is just repeating it means that receive and then retransmit again even in this case that it will take more time than for one hop so this is one thing that we you need we need to take into consideration what is the optimizing objectives that we want to achieve out of this routing a protocol uh, um, there's one thing more actually uh, for this multi hop that uh, it might be uh, like dangerous from security point of view so because every router here or every device delivering the message they we should be they should include some 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 routing uh, some, some security and uh, 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 like uh, level to to guarantee that uh, there is no hacking or or like uh, 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 some kind of um, um, listening to the message or maybe uh, it will be a uh, device in the, in in, uh, in the middle which can also make some um, um, floating for 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 the uh, for the network so and and blocking the the transmission of the message uh, maximizing the network lifetime so, uh, in some cases that uh, the network uh, if we have distributed network in this case and this network working uh, uh, based on their own battery uh, all the time we are looking for the most important devices which are uh, uh, which are routing the important um, uh, or the packets from two directions or two or different clusters inside the network so such important devices we need all the time to maximize the lifetime by by prolong their battery so we don't want to consume their energy very fast because if they are dead then the network connection will be disconnected so so the network will be disconnected and in that case we need to maximize the lifetime so we have actually different kind of optimizing or optimizing or opt, uh, uh, optimizing optimization objectives that we need to achieve during the design of the protocol uh, or, or of the routing protocols or algorithms okay after this first review about pro uh, the routing about um, uh, like uh, IP networking uh, let us start with the short range technology uh, personal area network and we start with the Bluetooth Okay, um, uh, we are not going to explain uh, the details of uh, the algorithms inside Bluetooth devices, but at least we know we, we want to see um, uh, their general uh, characteristics, what they can do and what they cannot do, uh, what are the uh, uh, like uh, the best application that it can be used for the Bluetooth. Uh, the Bluetooth. Uh, the Bluetooth is uh, is a wireless technology, and uh, uh, is uh, a simple choice for convenient wire-free short-range communication between devices. 
Bluetooth has been designed to be able able to deliver medium speed data rate it can be from 1 megabit per second up to 3 megabit per second actually we have also high speed bluetooth uh, which is designed to deliver up to i don't remember the exact bit rate but around uh, 20 megabit per second but it, it has not been that uh, much uh, useful for for some reasons that we will come to it and uh, uh, it is also connection oriented so the device just uh, it will be connected to certain devices during the transmission um, uh, the networking capability of bluetooth is not that strong actually bluetooth it can create uh, uh, only a, 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 like beaconet or scatternet the beaconet is uh, consisting totally with eight bluetooth devices where one of them is the master uh, device and the master device can be connected to seven uh, like slave devices so they in every beaconet there must be only one master device and the master device is this is the device which will give the order to all other slaves about the timing and about the hops inside that that uh, beaconet uh, the scatternet that uh, one device it can be slave in one Bikunet, but also it can be slave in another uh, Bikunet. So in that case, we have scatternet. So we can create many scatternets connected of many devices. Okay. Um, uh, so it is called master and slaves. Okay. And uh, a Bluetooth can be a good choice for the following application, for example, for wire line replacement for in, in short range point to point communication. Um, uh, actually, uh, the, the, the Bluetooth, when the connection is live, as you can see, the latency is very small. It is only 2 milliseconds, which makes it very good solution in case that uh, for a wire, a wire line replacement in some automation application. So it is very good because the, the latency is very small. It gives also moderate throughput requirement. As, as we said that up to 3 mega uh, bit per second is the data rate so the throughput can be around 1 megabit per second or slightly less about 700 kilobit per second and uh, a bluetooth device requires uh, recharge so always uh, we need to recharge or replace the batteries for the bluetooth, bluetooth devices but uh, recently we have bluetooth version 4 so like version 4.1 and so on this is called a bluetooth low energy ble bluetooth low energy actually it has much greater uh, enhancement in energy efficiency and actually it can work for much longer time uh, before we need to re to to recharge it and uh, they they have started using them in some like like uh, uh, sports watches that they don't need to be uh, uh, recharged frequently maybe once per couple of weeks uh, uh, in, in the Bluetooth technology, the data is transmitted in forms of time slots, okay, and uh, the width of each time slot is about 0.625 millisecond, so which means that the rate of transmission is 1 divided by, by 0.625 millisecond, and this gives us 1,600 like uh, uh, time slot uh, or bare, bare uh, Per second, so this is actually the the the, the transmission uh, bear uh, time slot. However, uh, in Bluetooth, is using uh, frequency hopping spread spectrum, and for every time slot, it will be transmitted over different uh, frequency. It is we uh, discussed this frequency hopping before so you can go back and you you start you revise it the frequency hopping spread spectrum and uh, the, the the hopping rate is 1600 hops per second so uh, uh, it will uh, send at different frequency or different channels with 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 a rate of a change with 1600 uh, like carrier per second and uh, the uh, the transmitting bandwidth or every channel band is about one megahertz, okay. And usually uh, Bluetooth is uh, is uh, 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 using the uh, ISM band from 
2.402 up to 2.480 gigahertz or from 2.4 up to 2.4835 uh, gigahertz uh, so it is about the total is about 79 megahertz and uh, uh, they keep 2 megahertz uh, like in the bottom end and 3.5 megahertz wide on, at the top to to uh, as a guard frequency okay and uh, uh, as uh, we said that we have 79 carrier and the transmission is 1,600 times that, that we jump between those carriers. So the Bluetooth jumping, for, for example, it starts to send the first time slot at, at, let's say, at frequency 3, and then the second time slot at frequency 10, the third frequency, the third transmission may be at 3 again, it can be 4, 17, 16, 25, they can jump between, this, between these uh, 79, uh, carrier at at the rate of 1600 uh, times per second okay so this will provide higher like uh, 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 like frequency diversity and uh, uh, and also it will maintain the multiple usage of the same channel between uncoordinated Bluetooth devices. So if we have some Bluetooth device, so for example, this is Bluetooth A, it transmitting with Bluetooth, for example, uh, B, okay? And we have another Bluetooth device C, tra transmitting with Bluetooth device D, and they are like point to point, and this is point to point, and they are in the same room. So in that case, uh, the probability of uh, collision is small uh, due to this multi-hop in the carrier frequency. Okay, so this is uh, this is one of the important features of Bluetooth. Uh, actually, Bluetooth oh, can maintain working also in case of uh, coexistence with Wi-Fi because we know that uh, many Wi-Fi standards, they are working also in the same ISM band, but still they can coexist in the same room with many other Bluetooth devices, with, with the several Wi-Fi uh, uh, routers, and they are working fine. And the, 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 the thank, thanks for this uh, frequency hopping spectrum that it is jumping between carrier to, 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 to another carrier. So we don't need to have like coordination to, to select the carriers. Uh, this of course simplify the, the, the system. Yeah, so the first version of Bluetooth, they use Gaussian uh, like frequency shift kink. Uh, it is also similar to the, to, to the modulation used in JSM somehow. And the data rate was about one megabit per second, but actually they, uh, in, in more like uh, in newer versions, it is possible also to, to use quadrature phase shift kink where you can send two bits per symbol or eight differential phase shift kink where you can send three bits per symbol, and in that case, we can increase the data rate from one up to three megabit per second. It is called Enhanced Data Rate Bluetooth EDR. Yes, this is, uh, uh, about the, the, the power, uh, transmission power, we have four classes of Bluetooth devices in terms of transmitting power. We have power class one, 100 milliwatt, power class two, 2.5 milliwatt, Power class 3, 1 milliwatt, and power class 4, 0.5 milliwatt, and it is mainly used for body access network. It is called BAN, it is a body access network. Yeah. We have explained this already. A Bluetooth protocol can support a different uh, a transport. Uh, mechanism such as TCP, UDP, and point to point protocols. Uh, the original standard was designed to support short range, inexpensive, and low power wireless communication that replaces wireline connection, like this uh, serial uh, uh, cable. Uh, however, recently it has been enhanced and developed to support the new requirements of Internet of Things. So, several devices of IoT start to use some advanced versions of the Bluetooth technology. Uh, for example, uh, uh, IoT application, they start to use the version 5 or after 5, beyond 5 uh, uh, standard, and uh, um, it has the capability to support longer range, 
at at much lower throughput. So because in many IoT application, we don't need actually high data rate. We don't need this one megabit per second. So some IoT application they 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 require much less uh, the data rate. Uh, it can be a couple of tens of bits per second and also they don't need to be like uh, uh, active all the time for, for for that for that reason uh, those capabilities has been in, uh, included in the new versions of bluetooth like version 5.1 for example it can support processing of information of angle of arrival and angle of departure so it ha it can support multiple antennas and in that case you can also estimate or or calculate the angle of arrival and angle of departure and this is very very important for the applications for locating and tracking devices okay and uh, so the positioning or indoor positioning they can use such kind of applications or such kind of technology and uh, more versions are expected to come to support industrial and smart uh, applications the other type of uh, short range uh, technology is called zigbee and uh, um, uh, the Zigbee actually is based on IEEE 802.15.4 uh, standard. Of course, there are so, also some like modifications and improvement and development of this standard. Okay, the good thing with with with, with Zigbee that uh, it can it can uh, uh, support uh, applications that need uh, much higher battery life. It can be sometimes months or even years of working without recharging the battery or replacing the batteries. So uh, also Zigbee is capable of uh, uh, connecting for mesh network size up to 64,000 devices together. Uh, uh, this is much powerful than the Bluetooth in that sense. Uh, remember, actually, the Zigbee was not designed with the same aim of the Bluetooth. Bluetooth, uh, the aim of the design of the Bluetooth is to replace uh, some wire line uh, uh, applications, like, for example, your mouse. We want to to connect the mouse without wire. Uh, your uh, headset connected the headset without wire, and and some such kind of applications, for example, keyboard and so on. So the uh, um, the aim was connecting small devices with a moderate data rate. For example, to to connect it to the your printer. For example, you don't need to connect it over the wire line. But Zigbee was designed uh, with the aim that it will support in industry. Because of that, uh, they, they, they reduce or they relax the data rate. So the, the data rate is, is lower than the Bluetooth. So generally it is 250 kilobit per second and actually it can be lower like 100 kilobit per second. So it, it is only 10% of the data rate supported by Bluetooth. But at the same time, it can, it can be connected to mesh uh, network size with 64,000 devices and also it is it includes the security layer uh, uh, and also it can be applied in embedded consumer electronics home and building auto uh, building automation industrial control uh, medical sensors and many many different applications it is also the cost is is much uh, cheaper than the the bluetooth uh, Zigbee can be uh, uh, the, the divided into three kinds. The Zigbee coordinator, which means that it is full function device. Full function means that it can work for any topology. It can be master in, in, in the topology or head of one topology. It can coordinate, it's called coordinator, and it can deliver um, uh, uh, or repeat or uh, messages to others and it can do anything this is the Zigbee coordinator it can be uh, uh, it can do any function of those three the second uh, uh, device is called Zigbee router in Zigbee router it has slightly less functions than Z Zigbee coordinator however it can also work as a router or passing information uh, uh, to other Okay, and uh, finally we have Zigbee end device ZED, and in this kind that it cannot uh, uh, route uh, or it cannot be a router, it cannot uh, uh, be a repeater for for other messages, and also it cannot be coordinator. It doesn't have the fu the functionality or the capability to be coordinator. So it, it works only as the end device. So they can run the application. Okay, and because of that, it has the longest battery life. 
Uh, Zigbee has uh, uh, much uh, uh, has many features. For example, simple to install, uh, reliable data transfer, extremely low cost, a reasonable battery life, and uh, maintaining uh, a simple and flexible protocol uh, uh, can be used for any of the communication topologies like point to point, star to uh, star, and also mesh uh, topologies. Um, okay, what is the modulation used in Zigbee? Zigbee uses CDMA. We studied CDMA before. Okay, and it uses also ISM uh, radio bands like Bluetooth. Uh, the main useful band is 2.4 gigahertz, but it can also work with other ISM bands like 900 megahertz in, in USA uh, and 800 something in Europe. So uh, peak data rate uh, uh, at the frequency 2.4 gigahertz is 250 kilobit per, sec per second, uh, but the throughput is 100 kilobit per second or much less. Okay, latency of Zigbee actually depends on the number of hops. However, if for one hop, it means that point to point, the, the latency can be 20 millisecond, which is actually higher than the the uh, uh, the latency of Bluetooth for the point to point uh, communication. So you can see that uh, it can uh, multiply uh, or it can use easily the multi hop routing, and it can uh, the, the 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 number of clusters can be up to 155 cluster of 255 54 nodes, which means that we can uh, create up to 64,000 nodes connected uh, together and this is maybe someone might ask what kind of application that we need that much of sensors actually maybe in some uh, like uh, uh, world field or maybe in some in some like distributed in some area where uh, that uh, we need too many devices to track uh, fluctuations or, or, or changes for some some objects there and so on uh, we have also the short range, uh, the, uh, the, the third uh, kind of short range technology is called ultra wideband. But the time is already now uh, 40 uh, minutes about. So let us stop here and we uh, complete in, in uh, coming clip that uh, the other short range technologies. Thanks a lot. Bye.